what a good manager you are. And so, uh, how is Brian Smith? Brian's doing well. He's, he can he will always survive. He loves to play music. He, he's all as long as he's playing music on the street corner somewhere, he's happy. Oh, good. Well, he's I probably miss, listening right now. I, I wish he would come in because I sure miss him. He's a great guy. So, Michael, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. How are you today? <laughs> right. Thanks for having me, Rebecca. Yeah, it's so exciting to have you in here. And uh, let's give a reminder to our listeners how you got started in music. How I got started in music. Mm -hmm. Um. Singing in my bedroom. Yeah. And as then, a kid. As a young yeah, as a kid. kid. Huh? And then I started playing little pubs, moved up to rough bars, and then went to Nashville and spent all 17 years of full time music business. So, wow. Wow. Um, that's Very all good. I committed my life to it years ago, and that's what I've stayed with, you know. Well, I'm so excited so. to have you here. You have a very powerful voice, and I was captivated, captivated uh, the first time I saw you at Bistro 150 in Oak Ridge. And, uh, do you feel like your singing has changed over the years, or do you feel like you've kind of stayed the same, or always stuck with country? No, it's it's changed a lot, and I never have really totally stayed with country. Um, I've I've done I do about every style of music there is, um, but I do as far as profession, I stay with the country market, and I'm changing slowly with it, you know, with the industry, and it's, the industry changes by the week anyway. And Could you give me an example, like what, in what way? Well, you know, um, as far as music, you know, in country music and straightforward country music, you can take the 80s and the 90s stuff, and it actually had steel guitars and fiddles, and now the country music's going more to guitars and, you know, loud drums and fireworks and all that stuff, you know, so it's kind of gotten to be more pop and rock, but you have to change enough to go with the industry to bank it in it. And okay. And I feel like I'm doing that slowly, and I had a hard transition with that because I, I grew up listening to the Eagles, which is my favorite band of all times, and uh, I do a lot of Eagles stuff. I think and they're coming so, to the Coliseum, aren't they? They yeah. are. They are. Yeah. Yes. I think they are uh, real soon here. But, yeah, they're really good. But oh, it's been a, it's been like a it's been like you know it's, a, it's an ever evolving industry anyway, and you have to learn to change with it enough to to be marketable. You know, you can you can knock yourself out of a good thing by not being a artist that that can adapt to change. And adapting to change for me was always one of my hardest things. I mean, I've always been like a, you know, you know, I like it like this. I remember in the 80s going to parties and everybody sitting around the candle in yards listening to the Grateful Dead and stuff like that. And all that stuff's like seems to be gone, you know. You, you know, playing guitar like that, you know, you see the changes and you try to change enough to go with it, you know, so. But it's enjoyable, and it's uh, it's all I've ever done, you know. And my, you asked earlier about my singing. Has it changed? It changed a lot in 2012 when I lost my voice. I lost my voice for a whole year. I, I had a paralyzed vocal cord, and uh, thanks to Dr. Wright and some other doctors, um, they got me on a good road to getting back to normal, like with being, you know, getting with vocal coaches and learning how to sing right you know I, I sing wrong for many years when you have a real powerful voice and you sing hard if you don't learn to breathe you don't do these certain things you can damage your vocal cords because they are an instrument is that how that happened i don't know it was a the doctor said it was from a viral infection wow. but after that year when i came back i used to be a uh, high baritone maybe a baritone now, now I can sing low tenor, so I kind of it's kind of a good thing because I got my vocal coaches and they worked on me a little bit, you know. So, wow, good for you. Pretty cool. So, uh, where have you been playing locally? And Gene, you hop in here anytime you feel like. Well, I just wanted to add a little while ago when uh, people ask me, well, what style is Michael in? And I'll say he can take you from Leonard Skinner to George Jones. You just tell us what you want, and he can he can play wide variety of songs interspersed with some of the originals. You left the Eagles out, Gene. You well, don't ever leave the Eagles <laughs> out. <laughs> All right. Well, look, I think let's start with the song. Let's, let's get some music going here. Talking about I, changing with the business. Okay. Um, I've been I've been writing some stuff. Um, me and Gene's kind of took a little, you know, we haven't been writing together lately. And uh, so I, I constantly mm -hmm. listen to the radio. I, I've made myself listen to the, to the, the radio. I, I like to listen to the, you know, the music that's, you know, the older music. I listen to a lot of older music. So I had to start listening to what's current. So I started thinking, okay, if I was writing a song, what kind of song would I write that 
you know, they always say you should sing to the women. You should, you know, you should do that kind of thing. So what would, in today's market, what could I make sound, you know, as a comparison to what's going on out there now? So this is something I came up with and I wrote, uh, if you like, it's called Forever in Your Eyes. Every time I see your smile, I see the sun rise. Every time I look into your eyes, I see the southern blue sky. Every time I hear the birds sing, and I hear Does that mean I'm like a drug? <laughs> I'm just playing. Speaking of which, looks like you're sporting a new tattoo there. What's that? It's a rose. Oh. I'm not a traditional rose petal person, but I like these petals. I, get, I got those petals. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's my rose. Bright green. All yeah. right. All right. So you have a regular following of fans. Does anybody in the audience ever get you really fired up? Like when you see the people that you know, does it? Does it inspire you to play more? You know, or faster or better? Or? For me, and yeah, I feel like I have a lot of gratitude. I, I appreciate everybody that comes to my shows. Black, white, red, what don't matter to me, you know. Yeah. And I always have something there for everybody. And I, I just appreciate people liking me and, and, and thinking enough. I have my own family. I have a lot of my own family that don't even acknowledge me being in the business. But, you know, I, um, but when I, had, when I see somebody listening or they buy a CD, you know, that's my euphoria. You know, that's why I do this, you know. It's really not about the money. We all love to have money. It's great to have a little bit of it when we can get it. Right. But um, my, my whole payback is like, you know, when somebody comes and sees me and I think enough of them 
just like September the 30th, I want everybody to remember, Carolina Theater. Um, two years ago, we sold the Crown Room out. And I was so shocked. I thought I might have 10 people. It was a bad storm that night. You know, Gene and I were like shocked. They kept coming in. Mm -hmm. And it sold out. And, you know, for me, it's almost emotional when I get up there. I try to hold my tears back sometimes. Oh. But I want to cry when, when I see people think enough to come see me play. Because, you know, it's not... The, at those times, it's not about the money, you know. It's about, you know, just, you mean they came to see me? You're not thinking, really? You're serious? Because we don't ever hear, artists never hear their self for what they really are. You know, I, I know artists, friends of mine, that are very, very talented. And they don't, some of them don't even know they're any good. You know, you're thinking, what? You know? I hope you always keep that humility and that, uh, when you get really huge, huge, mm -hmm. you come back and see us and don't forget where you started that won't three years ago. <laughs> that won't ever happen. I'm just teasing you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just like, I mean, like I said, I, um, uh, we've got a lot of great things in Nashville going on now. Uh -huh. I'm We're sure you'll get cover. to that in a second, yeah. yeah. Well, I, w I want to mention that you'll open for Travis Tripp three mm -hmm. different times. Oh my yep. gosh, that was good. What's that like? Is he one of your right. favorites? Yeah. Uh -huh. He's a... Uh, that guy can play anything with strings. <laughs> Get toss him a bucket with strings on it. He'll probably play a good song that, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, and, and you know, I've been fortunate to do a lot of those things, and and they've taught me. They've taught me a lot of things. And the biggest thing that I've seen is is learning how to work a stage. You know, a major stage, and those are not easy. You know, they're easy in some sense, but you don't see the crowd. You're up there, lights come on, and that's it. You have to pretend you're in. You actually, you have to pretend you see the people. You don't really see them past the front row. Wow. So you actually point out there, you know, and a lot of people know I'm legally blind, right? <laughs> and so a friend of mine was in the audience one day, he said, you pointed right at me. I said, did I? <laughs> so I couldn't see, you know. Well, I'm excited because you're here on the cover of Everything's Music. Here, I'll show your camera this. Everything. Everything's music. I'm. So, I was so proud to see your picture here. I mean, you know, we feel a lot of pride knowing you and, and getting a chance to see you. There's such Thanks. a great music scene here, and they did a two-page. You're in the centerfold here, and uh, I'm a centerfold. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could be. All right. So, Michael Ken here is the centerfold of everything music here, and it's a. It's a, it covers the triad music scene, and I spoke to the publisher yesterday. And a super nice guy, and his name is Steve Lasavita. And if you're interested in music, you can give him a call, 336-272-5122, and he might just cover your story. So you're on the cover of that, and I'm so proud of you. The yeah. girl that done all these pictures, Tamara Allen, mm -hmm. she's a great photographer here in Greensboro. She does all my photos on now, and she's like one of the very few people that's ever captured me smiling on camera, which is kind of funny because I don't smile a lot when I'm playing, believe it or not. Well. And I never have, but, so she's, she, she done the write-up for us. Uh -huh. um, and it's T-A-M-A-R-A-H, and her last name is Ellen. Uh-huh. And so is she on Facebook? Yeah, uh -huh. Tamara Ellen. Uh -huh. um, and Give you can TamaraseEyes.com. Yeah. Uh -huh. But she uh, did a real good job, and that was a cool thing to, you know, I was very honored to be able to be in that magazine when they asked me, I thought it was cool. Yeah. I appreciate every, all everybody's work yes. um, in there. Um, it's really exciting to see you there. All right, Gene, let me get to you for just a second. You've been Michael's manager for how long and what's your ro role in this relationship? Well, I've been his manager for about, probably officially about a year. <clears throat> I, I consider myself a writer, a songwriter, but I told Michael one day, we're just not getting anywhere. We're just kind of floundering around here. We've created some nice albums, but we're just not getting anywhere. Let me see what I can do. So I do all of his booking now. I try to line things up for him. I'm trying to get him to the forefront. I was able to get this magazine article about him. That's done more to post his, post his popularity in this area than anything we've done. So I just wanted to step in and, and, and let try to push Michael to the front. He's just too good to be on the back row. He needs to be on the front row. And that's what I'm trying to do. My next goal is to get him on the stage at the Coliseum. 
I can get him there, I feel like my job is complete. You know? Well, I don't know about complete. It's just the beginning, probably. <laughs> well, we hope so. Yeah. We hope so. And look, you used to teach history, and now look where you're at. I you're taught history for a long time, and I love love history. But after I retired, I wanted to go back to my true love, and that was that was music. And I started writing. I've actually done 25 songs for two studios in Nashville before I met Michael, wow. and then we hooked up through a mutual friend and. The first time I heard him sing, I just said, <clears throat> I don't want to write another song for anybody else but him. And we've had a good relationship since then. Yeah, well. We've done four albums together now. My goodness. And, and you write the songs. You write a lot of the songs? I, I, we, it, it's halfway. We've got, when you go on an album, sometimes you'll see a song that he wrote in its entirety. You'll see a song that I wrote in its entirety. Michael always puts the music to it. I'm a lyricist. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll see some that we've written together co-written together. We'll start out on the verse and get stuck and Michael will have a verse and then I'll have a second verse and you know it just all kind of comes together. We kind of get on the same page sometimes when we get in this living room. It's just a remarkable feeling sometimes when you get locked in to a feeling next thing you know there's a song it's on a piece of paper and then two days later it's on a CD. It's, it's very rewarding to do that and Michael, <clears throat> Michael can pick out a melody in no time. Speaking of melodies, you ready for another song? Yeah. All right. I was sitting. I was just sitting there thinking about songs. This is a song that I dream. I dream. Is it dream or dreamt? I didn't like. I'm not an English major. I always said dreamt, but I dreamt. Okay, that would be proper, I, right? I think, so I think either one is correct. <laughs> dreamt. Since we're in the college here, I better say dreamt. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I dream that. <laughs> but it's a song I wrote. Um, and it was kind of a neat song um, because you're laying in the bed. And you jump out of the bed and you got this melody in your head. I already had the music. I already seen where the capo was on the guitar of my dream. And so I said, well, that was easy. So I went and put that there. And all every lyric came out of my mouth right then. This is like at 6 in the morning. I wrote all the words down to this song. A little song called Baby, Would You Like to Dance? It's kind of, it's kind of, I, I think it's a weird thing, but it, it worked. So I, was, I did like it.
that song. But. Well, I was at his house the morning he, he had that dream. I just got there and we were going to re work on something else. He said, I just had the craziest dream last night. And he said, it's a song. I said, let me hear it. And he, he, he played it. It was beautiful. And a week later, we recorded it. It, it is great. Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was during the long way to Hollywood. Um, it, yeah. And, uh, and we were like, we were <laughs> we were actually looking for another song somewhere. We were picking through stuff, and I dreamed that song, and it's weird. Um, kind of a magical time. It was. You know? It was. Yeah, a lot of things come to us in our dreams. Okay, let's get to the exciting news. You are going to Nashville. Let's talk about that. How how is it you, you're going to go there, and what are your plans when you get there? Well, what happened about uh, it's been three months now. Time's flying. Um, we started seeing an email pop up through my Reverb Nation page. You can go to Michael Ken Reverb Nation and hear all the music. Well, and then I, there was a girl that kept coming on my Facebook. I started this thing called the Coffee Cup Music Series, and it's on Michael Ken Gerald J A R R E L L Facebook dot com. And and what I do is I take requests from people to sing cover songs, or they sometimes they want to hear original songs, and. Uh, so we do that, and I'll talk about stuff, and I don't take it serious. If I mess up a chord or a lyric or something in it, I'll, everybody always knows it because I look and smile. You know, I look and smile at the camera. I don't want to, you know, there's a live version, there's a recorded version. You know, live, we do mess up sometimes, believe it or not. Believe it or not. There's right. always you mistakes. You always forget lyrics. And uh, so I started doing this series. Well, there was a girl in Nashville named Anita Rakes, Cuba. But she kept coming on there saying, great deal. One day she asked me if I had a, uh, had, did I have any kind of deals, promotional deals? And I knew that was a lingo for a record label. So I thought she was a little record label, but she wasn't. Her brother had been in a record label years ago, and she was a song pitcher for publishers. And she started sharing my videos around Nashville. And I'm pretty sure that somebody in that Red Ridge Entertainment seen that one of those videos all also listening to the stuff on Reverb Nation, so they actually started trying to get to me through that, so I ignored them, because I'm used to going to Nashville and people saying, if you pay me this, we'll make you a star, that kind of deal. So I was like, my very first uh, conversation with the CEO of Red, Red Ridge, Gary Sackcliffe, um, he was telling me, he said, we don't need the artist developing you, we know you're already developed, you've already done everything there is, except for being a star, you know. And so I looked, I, I was on the phone with him taking everything he said in, and this is exactly what I said. I said, Gary, I've been to Nashville and been raped before, <laughs> and I'm not coming back again and paying you nothing to do it. He goes, Michael, he paused for me and said, Michael, we're not gonna rape you. <laughs> and that's just a saying for like, you know, being drug across the coals, you know. Um, you, know uh, you know, there's a lot of promises out there and this all usually leads to a dollar, but anyway, these people just believed in what was going on. So me and Gene started investigating and it turned out to be a really good thing. And that's where we're going to, we signed with Red Ridge, what, what, when was that Gene? I can't even remember. Three weeks ago, three weeks It's ago. only been three weeks, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So we signed with them and we're going up there to record my first single um, with them. And we kept there again, we're tossing songs around there. We're going, one thing I was surprised, they were letting me use a song that we had written, so I'm like, Wow, that's kind of cool. Well, you want to go to your stuff. I insisted on that, though. I insisted not do on that. A cover, uh, we, we're going to do original, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, okay, so I don't know much about the recording industry. So if you record a song here, like the one that you just played, where do you do that? We had been doing all of our albums were done at Mitch Snow's um, studio, and, and you know, it's a home studio, home based studio. In um, Thomasville. It was in Thomasville, actually. And you know, there's a big difference in the recording here and in, in Nashville. They, you know, of course, they've got big studios and stuff. And so where we're going to record there is Red Ridge Entertainment. It's actually the label. And uh, so and they have Magenta Records, which yeah. is with them. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of opportunity there. And so the, do they distribute that? Do they really <coughs> market that? Yeah, they're going to, they're actually, they're not going to distribute it at this time. Um, I'm going to talk to a guy that may be doing the management out of Nashville while we're there, Jeff Carver. He was Tracy Lawrence's, uh, he was a country singer, Tracy Lawrence's manager. We're going to meet with him. That's going to be part of his job and, and also his promotion, the promotion people to do. But 
Gary and those guys are gonna basically, artists make money from tours. They don't make money from record sales. Um, a lot of people think, well, it's your song. Yeah, we get royalties, publisher royalties usually, but it's, we don't get a lot of anything else. Is you gotta go out and play. And these guys' job is basically to record me, build a profile around me for the next several months, and then they're gonna start booking me um, as an opening act in front of people. And then hopefully you get to the point where I'm the headliner, you know. So that's that's kind of the way it works. It's a process of elimination, basically, you know. I've heard that it's really tough to work your way up, and it seems like it would be really hard to know who you can trust. That seems mm -hmm. like a big yeah. deal. I mean, just, yeah. just to have something go wrong with your computer at home, all these things pop up, let us fix it for you. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you learn the hard way, and I can see where this, it could be the same in the music industry. and. Uh, I bet you're just so excited, and your family's excited for you, and mm -hmm. Mr. Gene here is excited for you, and uh, this, yeah, I, I want to know how it all comes out. Let me know. Let yeah, us, I definitely will. Uh -huh. It's been like 17 years, and I've wanted to quit. Every time I want to quit, <coughs> you know, because, you know, uh, there's a difference in, in people who go out and they're what I call bar bangers. They go out and play bars, and they, they just like to play in clubs. But then there's some of us that are writers, and, and we're... Um, we're live performers and we're trying to get out there and, and have our song on the radio. We want to get out there and be known. I've never really wanted to be what you call a big superstar, but I do want people to hear some of the songs. And uh, and and doing that for 17 years, and I'll say probably 15 years, uh, 14 years of that time has been really pushing it. You know, I've been really trying and really trying to stay focused and there's so many things that, that snare you along the way. It's easy to get distracted doing it. And the one thing that I, I stayed away from drugs and alcohol has kept me, I've seen so many of my friends get pulled down. Artists that get tied up in all these snares, that ruins their career. And you have to stay focused and you have to try to change with the times. And that's been the hardest. I think if I had to say anything, changing with the times has been my hardest, but I think I'm getting used to it. Because you want to retain who you are inside. You don't ever want to be that guy that's a clown on the stage, you know, that's not really who he is. You know, and I want to be who I am because I think people would know it for what. I think I think you're going to be huge, and you know, uh, Travis Tritt, Robert Cray, they all had to struggle. They all had to start somewhere, and at some point, they had their big break and became well-known, beloved stars. And you're you're there. You're on your way. And I think I think that you're going to do so well. This is this might just be the thing. You know. It's like people that come on that show, The Voice. It's their, it's their 15 minutes of fame. It's like, where have you been? Well, I've been around, but uh, thank goodness we found you. Yeah, because there's been a lot of them on there and, and a lot of the other reality shows that have been out there doing what I'm doing. And they, they passed the audition to get on there. I tried out for The Voice in L.A. and didn't even get through the first round because I went out there and I was... I got there and it was... a. a I don't know, I just wasn't what they were looking for. And that's how tough that is. And that's how I see the music business in a whole nutshell. You know, if you're not what they're looking for, it don't matter what kind of talent a person has. It don't mean, you know, if you're a great Eddie Van Halen sounding guitar, if that's not what the guitar, if that's not what they're looking for at the moment, don't matter how good you are, they won't use you. And so that happens. All right, I was well, talking to a producer last night in Nashville. And he told me, he says, Michael can out sing 90% of the people on the radio right now. They, oh. He just hasn't been promoted properly. Yeah. I, that's probably true. And this is going to be a lesson for you as well as Michael on how to proceed from here. I'd like to say WQFS Greensboro. And now, how about another song? All right. another? I'm going to do the song that I'm recording in Nashville. Okay. I just feel like I'm running out of town. This song is literally exactly from my heart about what I've been talking about and that's why it's probably good to do this song um, in Nashville for the first song and I was surprised it's not it's a little bit different than you'll hear the difference than what I usually do but everybody was in agreement that this is the one we should do so I'm gonna go with it so hope you enjoy it. it's gonna feel like I'm running out of time <laughs>
song. I mean, that's the song that he's going to, and see, you hear the difference, okay? I, if I could, I'd probably sing all ballads, and Gene will tell you that, but I know that I have to do some really kicking stuff, and I like to do it once I get into it, um, but I like to sing the ballads, but just not enough. You got to you gotta put stuff out there to give a little bit of kick, you know, a little mm -hmm. kick in the butt a little yeah. bit sometime, you know, every now and then you got to wake them up, so. Mm, that did it. So we're working on them. All right. Well, you have a lot of gigs coming up here. I'm just going to read them off here, and if you want to throw in anything about those, August 19th, the Honey Bee Festival in Kernersville. What's that festival about honey? It apparently. is about the celebration of the honey bee, uh -huh. the glorious honey bee. It's uh -huh. a lot of crafts and vendors over there, music. Michael goes on at 115 for uh, 90 minutes. I'll tell you the story behind that. I tried to get him in last year, and... Uh, they were filled up, and the lady that said, well, why don't you bring him over here and let him show off for 15 minutes while one band is tearing down another band is setting up. So I said, okay, we'll do that. And uh, so Michael did, he put on, he did about six songs. I mean, he ran more right after another. And the next day, the lady emailed me. She said, all over the park, people are saying, who is that guy singing? Mm. She said, if you guarantee me you can deliver him next year, <clears throat> we'll sign the contract now. Yeah, that's really good. All right, then, Labor Day weekend, North Myrtle Beach? Yeah, well, it's actually in Little River. It's a place called oh. Karma. Okay. Um, really cool little local bar. Uh-huh. And I can't, I don't, I'm trying to think how that came about me getting to play there. Oh, yeah, um, some family uh, down there had went in there and ate, and they said, this would be a cool place. So they talked to the lady, and the lady that actually that owned it was from High Point. Uh -huh. And so they told her, but so I went down and played it. And uh, it went real, real good. So I'm going back for Labor Day on the second. Looks like you are booked. You're getting booked. <clears throat> excuse me. You're getting booked up here. Have you heard of uh, Peg Farnham? She has a place here called Listen Speakeasy at Hush here in town. Uh -huh. It's a small venue, and uh, you'd be perfect for that. Okay, then September 9th, Bush Hill Festival in Archdale. Mm -hmm. And September 16th, River Fest in Eden on the Dan River. I love rivers. I would love to go to that. You're the river lady. I am. Thank you for remembering that. I am the river lady. Yeah, September 30th, Crown Room. Here's the big one at the Carolina Theater, and you're hoping to break attendance. Rates. We hope so. We yeah. hope so. We had such a good a good show there two years ago, and we're hoping to yeah. bring the house down this well, year. Well, I'll remind people as we Do get so. closer to that Yeah, day. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then uh, November 4th at the Grove Winery. And, uh, boy, you guys have so much going on. It's just so exciting. Do you have any spare time? Do you do anything in your spare time? Do you go ever watch music or see music anywhere? 
No, um, I don't go to many concerts. Uh -huh. uh, just because, like I told you earlier, I'm visually impaired. I have to be like front row, and front row tickets are way too much. So, <laughs> uh, so I just kind of, you know, stay at home. Now I do watch a lot of stuff on TV, you know, or um, but I, I basically. Pretty much these days, I, I, I just immerse myself in songwriting and, and working on my music and per perfecting the sound. Um, and this thing with Red Ridge has gotten to be so over overwhelming for me personally as an artist, trying to figure out what to make the right step every time. And Gene and I talked about it lots of times. You want to make sure you do the right thing at all times. So I've been busy networking with people, um, a lot of songwriters in the industry and also promoters and 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 all that kind of thing and the manager uh, become really good friends haven't even met him face to face the manager in um, Nashville because you need Gene's a manager here but you need that guy in Nashville that's that's, right. that's got those connections so we, they're working hand to hand together and they get along it's really cool so it's a good it's a good merge of management it's a good merge of you know we're all we all seem to be friends we got a good producer there in Nashville Mark Oliveris, he's a good friend and supporter of us. And then, of course, Gary Sackcliffe of Red Ridge Entertainment, and his uh, engineer and producer with that studio, Cameron. Um, so we've got a lot of really good things going. I heard yeah. that you had um, Lee Greenwood's uh, drummer. drummer. Drummer, maybe in that session, uh, the, the recording session, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, supposedly, well, this is true. The, uh, uh, Keith Urban's rhythm guitar player, ex rhythm guitar player, is mm -hmm. going to be in that recording session as well. Wow. So it's going to be some, some good people to work with. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah that's it's so exciting. Well, let's close out with another song if you have it. Okay. Have you might have to do a cover. Please do whatever you like. I'm just happy to give me a guitar to you. If I beat it to death, man, go. By the end of tomorrow, I might have to get a new bridge on the same. I play very aggressive and hard on the guitar, I always have. And it's easy for me to break strings and stuff like that, but I get carried away, you know, so well, spiritual you'll thing. you have one of those assistants, those uh, roadie guys that switches them out for you every song. That's what Robert Cray did. Every song, he had a new guitar handed to him. Yeah. And I yeah, guess because they go out of tune. They do. They yeah, do. especially he plays the, uh, he plays at um, Stratocaster. Uh -huh. And yeah, the Defender Stratocaster. I'm a big Robert Cray fan too, so. Uh -huh. And he's like, you know, hey, he plays pretty hard too. He yeah. picks with his fingers, you know, so. This is a song that I recorded some years with staying with the Nashville theme. Um, some years ago, I was always a 70s music fan. I always loved the sound. I think it was like the best era of music we ever had with the artist and the sounds we had on the radio. So this is a song I recorded in Nashville the first time. And I feel like it's good karma to play this song. It's a little song from Paul Davis called I Go Crazy. And it was uh, my arrangement there in Nashville. I got to record with Jeff King from Reba McIntyre's band. He was the lead guitar player and a lot of other really good musicians. So I hope you enjoy this.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.